All right. So I've started to use clone stamp on my clone stamp layer to add little fur and different textures in areas to help bring the whole design together just using option. This is on a new layer at the top at 100% opacity. Very important that I'm not um, adding it to or uh, doing it on my uh, merge layer directly because then I would be changing the pixels in ways that I couldn't put back. Now what's the beauty of doing this on a separate clone stamp layer is that you can turn it off and on and you can also modify it. So I don't even worry too much about overdoing it because human nature is to kind of overdo things. Especially when we're focusing on them this intently. And there's nothing wrong with overdoing things except when you want everything to, to look balanced and finished at the end. So you can steal shadows from clone stamp. You can set your clone stamp to be a lower opacity. But I think it's better just to erase, erase them out gently at the end. So you'll see what I mean in just a second. I'm even going to clone stamp on top of some of these shadows. Like maybe take this shadow and clone stamp it into this shadow. So it's a little bit more suggestive instead of just a loss of content. And you'll see it will make a big difference. When I turn off that clone stamp layer. Okay, the other texture I'm bringing in multiple places, I actually might want these spikes. Because this leg looks a little boring. So maybe I want some of these, these spikes. Let's see, what are good ones to use? Maybe these. I want to add them to the leg here. little bit there, like add a spike there, and then this one add to the bottom ridge here. There we go. So 100% clone stamp can really do something pretty strong. And because it's cut out nicely, then it's already cut out nicely on the foot there. I can take these spikes, and I can add them to the back here. help this transition be a little bit more dynamic and varied. Same thing maybe right here. Now I don't want them to all be so copy pasty. <laughs> and I'm going to fix that by kind of selectively erasing out. So this isn't that different than the cartoon jumble. Now we're just doing it with full color and texture. And then selectively getting rid of stuff. Maybe kind of let this peek through. That shadow come in there. One more, yeah. No. This shadow. So we're cheating, basically. We're painting, but we're painting with other people's pixels. But they are completely unrecognizable. They're our creations now. We've adjusted them to be what we want. Even draw in stripes if I so choose underneath this fur. Okay. 
Yeah, I like that. So now the fur I'm going to use to help transition the, um, the ears. So I'm going to kind of put a little bed of fur, like a vulture's neck, at the base of the ears. Ears are often furry. I wish I had more dark hair, but I'll make use of what I've got. And then I'm going to make use of some of these sharp, very contrasted spikes for this back edge. Help that stand out a little bit because it's a little uh, low in focus, unfortunately. And even take some of these spikes, use those at the top here. And then lastly, I think I'll take a little bit of this texture and put it into the ears. This kind of waxy, highlighted texture from the pine cone here. Even though they're both pine cones, they look very alien to each other. It gives a little spot of highlight, and a little structure of those ridges, which is helpful. And maybe I want a little bit of that color, even on the head. Remember, this is still at 100%, which is pretty bold. But I don't need to be afraid of it, because I can dim it down on my clone stamp. I don't really have enough color on this lower jaw for it to really stand out and compete with the upper jaw yet. But that can be fixed. And this stuff is fun. Overdo it a little bit. All right. Now this, this needs help for sure. Let's put some spikes back there. Remember, I'm not hurting the pixels underneath. I'm just adding a new layer on top. Maybe put a spike on the underside there. Let's get some of these. dark shadowed scales as my shadows. And then I can take some of this yellow and push that into the lighter spots or some of this waxiness. Kind of paint these scales. This is all at 100%. I will tone it down. So make the most of your clone stamp layer. It can do wonders for you.
All right. So now, big difference there. Now I'm going to take that clone stamp layer and I'm going to change to the eraser. And I'm going to keep about 53% soft edged and I'm going to start transitioning those clone stamps in. Deciding how much I want to keep. Maybe even lower than 50%. And you might decide you want to keep a whole lot of it. That's up to you. The fur texture, I'm going to start using my brush, my low opacity brush, and softening around it. So this new fur texture I added, I'm going to turn the gray back on. I want to soften that edge. This, this is just on the clone stamp for now, but I can soften these transitions. So it doesn't look spotty. Take out some of the hard edges where I don't want them. Yeah, I really like how the scaly kind of pine cone back turned out. There are little areas that don't make as much sense anatomically. Yeah, most of it works pretty well, though. And every once in a while, you'll need some, some sharp cutout if you got close to the outline edge, and then you'll just use your lasso and cut it out again. It's just the nature of it. Okay, so now we're going to merge the clone stamp with <laughs> our cutout layer. Once we're happy with what everything's doing, oh, I need to erase some of this fur. It's just so much fun. Okay, so now going to merge these together. Oh, let's cut out this edge. I'm going to lose that hard edge there. All right, so I hold down Shift, and I select both layers, and I go to Layer, Merge Layers. So now it's all in one layer, nicely cut out. Make sense? It's all there. It's a beautiful finished project. So now what can we do to make it even better? I'm going to make a duplicate of it, Command-J. I'm going to lock the one underneath so I don't screw it up. And now I'm going to call this Dodge and Burn. But I need the layers there in order to dodge and burn. I need the pixels there in order to affect them directly. So first I'm going to use the Burn tool. I'm going to do mid-tones and exposure of no more than 30. Large, soft, pressure-sensitive brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a shadow behind the ears. Help that ear stand out on the neck. And again, this will be on a separate layer on top, so I can modify it because we always tend to overdo. Hit the back of the ears a little bit. Hit the underside of the mouth a little bit. This is burning it. If I want to burn the highlights, like this little lip here, these strong whites, burn them down. 